everyone. Welcome to HOA Fight Club. I'm Raylene Chifano. Let's discuss the Alms Bedman program. I know people think that this program will solve everybody's problems in HOA across the United States, but I have to say um, I have dealt with the Alms Bedman program um, in a few different states, and I have not a good view of what they do, and there are some certain reasons why, um, but I'd like to go over that program with you. So across the United States right now, there are only six states that actually have a Alms Bedman program. So if we go to, I'm going to actually show you this uh, map that I have and share my screen here. So in the United States, we have Nevada, Colorado, Illinois, Virginia, and Florida that have the Alms Budman program. Now, if we look at what these programs do, you will see, um, and I did get this from the CAI website. I think that it was um, pretty informational about how they feel because I do want to know how they feel about the Alms Budman program. But if you look at them, these six states, um, I'm going to take Illinois because Illinois seems to have a program that doesn't do anything. They admit they don't do anything. If you look at what they do, they don't accept the complaints are limited. They don't investigate the result. You know, the resolves complaints is limited. Um, In-house mediation, no mandates mediation, no ADR referrals, no um, administration here. So if you look across these, many of these things they can't do. Now, if you're going to have a program that offers oversight over an HOA, there has to be somebody in the program, the Ombudsman program, that knows HOA laws. Um, most Ombudsman programs are ran by the real estate divisions of the state. So Nevada's is ran by uh, the real estate division. Now, we... I have personally made a complaint to the Nevada real estate. And what I found was that the Nevada real estate ombudsman for the HOAs doesn't understand even the complaint process. So the Nevada real estate program has put a specific guideline of how you have to make each complaint. Every complaint you make has to be on an individual page. And, and when we turned this complaint into the ombudsman's office, that ombudsman didn't really know what they were doing. So he didn't understand the complaint process. Um, he just was not um, aware of what he should be doing um, with this complaint and that he didn't understand the election process of an association. So when the association doesn't give out proper notice and allows for a board member to appoint board members um, without a vote or an election or even a special meeting um, outside of the annual meeting, then that is not the correct process. But the Ombudsman of Nevada doesn't understand that process. So if you've never been in an HOA or even had to deal with a lot of the HOA you know, details, you're not even going to know what to do. Now, I have talked to the Florida Ombudsman before um, in a two-hour Zoom call with homeowners, and he, again, is a young guy um, in the real estate division, a realtor that um, didn't know HOA. I mean, he was not able to do anything for these homeowners. Um, we had one homeowner that was making complaints um, about her life being in jeopardy. And a few days later, she was found dead in her home. Now, that might not have had anything to do with the HOA, but who knows, because nobody investigated anything. Um, the complaints are not serious um, when it comes to the homeowners. Nobody takes these serious, these complaints very serious. Now, when we look at why CA, CAI doesn't like the Ombudsman program, um, it, they state that it doesn't provide a fair and balanced process to educate community association disputes. Most often, it serves to create a process by which a homeowner may file a complaint against the elected board, but does not provide the ability for the board to file a complaint against a homeowner. Well, the board doesn't have to file a complaint against the homeowner because the board's already um, got the power of the municipality. They're the jury judge and executioner. If the homeowner's not doing what they're supposed to be doing or causing being a nuisance, the board can actually you know, assess fines and fees and collections for that person that violates the governing documents. Um, so now if there's a complaint that a board member can't solve, that's probably a neighbor to neighbor complaint 
or the board member and the neighbor have an issue personally. And we don't get to pick our neighbors. So we need to have people that understand that we don't get to pick our neighbors. You don't know who's running or serving on a board. These are uneducated volunteers. They might not be running things correctly. These boards need guidance. So the, if you're gonna have an ombudsman program, that ombudsman would have to know the laws. And that ombudsman cannot be a CAI member cannot be a member of a trades group that benefits from doing HOA law. So you have all these attorneys that are members of CAI. They profit from these associations that they're lobbying for the super or super uh, uh, priority liens and non-judicial foreclosure. So they have a um, a conflict of interest. They cannot be a CAI or the ombudsman. CAI people cannot be the ombudsman and be fair and neutral. That's why I don't believe in their mediation program, because if you're in their CAI mediation program, you have to be a member of CAI. Well, that right there is a conflict of interest. So I don't think that our ombudsman can be anybody that's a member of anything. The ombudsman has to be a person that understands HOA laws, can look at a set of governing documents, can look at the situation that's happening and be able to determine where the issues are. Now, when I get somebody that makes a complaint, I can make a determination probably within a half hour of really what's going on in a program or in an HOA um, depending on the evidence that I receive. Now, most of the times it's the governing documents that I receive, emails between you know, the homeowner and the board or being fined or whatever, but I can usually tell what's going on. And a lot of the times what the problem is, is not the association, it's the professionals that are managing the association. Um, they aren't looking at the governing documents and they aren't doing things fairly. So the ombudsman shouldn't be monitoring what's going on in the community but we should be able to make a complaint to the ombudsman about the professionals. Look, the attorney is not, you know, the attorney is coming after me, charging me $10,000 worth of fees for $250 past due assessment. That's something the ombudsman could really go in and, and take care of by just monitoring what the attorneys are charging, what the attorneys are doing, how many people are, are in, uh, have liens in that community, how many people are in foreclosure. Those are the things that I look for. So when I get a complaint from the community, not not only do I take what the, the homeowner is saying, I actually look at the public records of the community. I look and see how many liens are applied. What attorney is doing those liens? Is it an attorney that's been with this association for 20 years or is it a brand new attorney? Um, you can tell a lot by just looking at the public websites, um, the county pages of liens and foreclosures. That gives us a lot. Now, if you want um, to talk about ADR, Everybody should have to go through an ADR or mediation program, and that is called small claims court. That would be an easy solution for everyone. It's low cost. It can be done online um, in most states. Um, Washington State's perfect. You can file your complaint online in small claims court. $10,000 is the max. If fines and fees and all of that were taken to the small claims court, court program, instead of being allowed for liens and foreclosures, we'd see a lot less foreclosures. We'd see a lot less um, liens being applied because there wouldn't be the incentive to foreclose. Liens are applied by these attorneys because there's an incentive to foreclose. We should not be giving anyone an, an incentive to foreclose. And if attorneys are actually filing these cases, they shouldn't be able to charge more than $500. We're already putting these people past due. If they're not paying their dues, they're not able to pay attorney fees, especially not $10,000 worth of attorney fees. Then it comes to the election processes. Let's talk about that. That's an easy process. Was notices sent? Were they sent on time? Did the board run the program correctly when they were doing it? How many, if they we need to have fair elections. We have fair elections in our communities in for mayor and governor and all that. Why can't we do the same type of election process in our municipalities or our HOAs? Because those are a municipality. Just because they're not a legal state or city run municipality, they are the municipality. They are making and determining 
decisions for all these homeowners, they're charging us fees, which are taxes. Our HOA dues are taxes. Those are taxes on what we, the services that we have for our water, sewer, garbage, um, everything that comes into that, that community that needs to be taken care of comes out of those dues. So I think that we should have some sort of oversight. I'm just not sure that the Ombudsman program is the appropriate place. You have to have someone that knows, knows the laws. Now, that person doesn't have to be an attorney. Like I said, I can understand what is going on in the community. I'm not an attorney, but I know what the laws are. I know how to read governing documents. I know that when I look at a case, I can see that an attorney or property manager isn't doing their job correctly. And I should be able to report that person to someone and say, look, this community is having problems, not because of who the board or the association members are, but because of the professionals that are not representing the corporation. You cannot represent a board and properly represent a corporation. The attorney has to represent the association. And if there's a conflict between the board and the homeowners, then both sides should have to get their own attorneys or take it to a small claims court program where there's an impartial tribunal, where there's a judge looking at the evidence. And I just finished a court case in the small claims court of Washington state. And those judges are very educated. They're smart. They understand the law. And I think that we would be serving ourselves better to have a small claims program for court program for the HOA system. Um, we, I mean, you could run an entire court just for HOA. You could have a judge that understands that. But the problem is, is how long before people start buying off that judge? And I hate to say it, but I see it all the time. I see people that are in public offices that are not doing what's best for the people. They're doing what's best for them and them being able to run for the next um, phase of government or whatever they're doing. Um, I do see I've been very amazed with um, a couple judges in Nevada. They are amazing. They they are smart. They are on the ball. They understand HOA. So I think that we're we're taking uh, the fact that we could have an impartial tribunal by just using our courts that are already set up. I think that CAI is creating a mediation program because it benefits them. I don't think it benefits the associations. It benefits them not only financially, but it keeps control within their community. You know, CAI does not want anybody else to control the HOA industry. They control the in industry and homeowners are an industry and the governing our governments need to decide whether keeping people housed is a better option or what is what's best than keeping an attorney as an HOA attorney. You know, if an attorney has, uh, if HOA ends tomorrow, that attorney can still be an attorney. They can just fight a different part of law. They can focus on something else. But a homeowner that loses their homes to that attorney, they are ruined forever. They're in financial ruin and bankruptcy and they are homeless. And we have to, the profits for an attorney should not outweigh the need for housing for our, your constituents as legislators. So when you ask whether we need an ombudsman program, no, we don't need an ombudsman program. We need a fair person looking at these programs going, no, that's not right. We need a fair person that can look at the governing documents and say, you know what, this is what's going on. That can look at a letter from an attorney and say, you know what, Mr. Attorney, you don't have the right to write that letter in the first place. You're making threats on somebody that is not appropriate. There should be a mediation process. We should be in the small claims court system and we should be keeping people in their homes, not looking as the trades group CAI does to have super priority liens and to force people into foreclosure. Most people don't go into foreclosure because of their assessments. They go into foreclosure because of the HOA attorney fees that are added, the fines, and that attorney does not most in most states, they can charge whatever they want. So for that $250 that's past due, that attorney can charge $20,000 and collect with a lien and a foreclosure on that home. That attorney gets paid no matter what, whether that homeowner pays it or whether the association pays it. So it doesn't make good financial business sense either for these associations to be paying these attorneys these outrageous fees um, to collect for a $50 fine 
or for a $250 pass due assessment. The small claims court is the perfect place for those um, contesting or, and then everybody gets their day in court. It's, it's an impartial. In Washington state, mediation is free with the small claims court. It costs $50. I was at mediation four different times and at court twice, and it was $50. And at the end of the day, the person that lost that case had to pay that $50 and the the judge's fees, which was $85. So that is a lot more reasonable for these homeowners that are having issues with their association than waiting nine months for an ombudsman to reply or waiting for the board to do something or waiting for the civil courts that are $20,000 for attorney fees just to get into the court system. It's not a fair system. It's You talk about you know, the dispute program not being fair. Well, the board at least can make a complaint. The homeowners, they're not even heard. So the board has the power to find the board. The homeowners don't have the power to find the, the board members that are violating the governing documents. So let's talk about what can make it fair. Let's have somebody that's impartial. Let's have, you could have a national person that just looks up. I mean, I work across the United States. I see it every day in every state. Um, the cases that I work on and, and I do this for free. So there's no financial motivation for me to be biased. So it really helps when there's a person that's looking from the outside in that doesn't have anything to gain. Um, I don't live in an HOA. So I, you know, once I settled my case, I moved out and ended that because it was not worth being there. But I cannot stand back and just say that everything is okay and walk away. I have to be the voice for the people that are still in those associations needing somebody to help them, not just the homeowners, but the associations. If the homeowners are healthy, wealthy, and happy, so is the association. So that's my goal, is to keep everybody happy and housed. All right, you guys, I'll see you on the next one.